Now, in the case when I have uh, both translation and rotation of a frame relative to another, so the second frame is translated and rotated relative to the first frame. And this would be the general case. So let's see how it looks like. I have frame A here in black, and I have frame B in red. And the relationship between A and B is known. So we have translation in green here. That's you can see that's defined by P of B origin relative to A. And we also have rotation uh, that defined that's defined by the rotation of B relative to A. Uh, that shows the rotation uh, of frame B relative to A. So frame B is both rotated and translated relative to A. Now if I look here, I have a point P that's already defined relative to frame B. Okay, and that definition is right here, P relative to frame B in green. Okay, and what I need to do is I need to define P, but, uh, but this time I need to define it relative to frame A. Okay, and that definition is right here, P relative to A in blue. Okay, so given P of B relative to A, and given the rotation of B relative to A, and given P relative to B, I need to find P relative to A. Okay, in this case, I have two terms. I have the first term as a rotation term, and then the second term that accounts for translation. So P relative to A equals to the rotation of B relative to A multiplied by P relative to B plus P of the origin of B relative to A. Okay, so this equation here can give me uh, or map point P to be defined relative to frame B uh, and then uh, give it to me to be defined relative to frame A instead. Now, I can utilize the, transform the homogeneous transformation matrix that we found earlier and simplify this equation further. So if you look at this, we have a transformation matrix in the standard format, and that format includes the rotation portion, RB relative to A, and the translation portion, uh, PB origin relative to A, okay? And it's a four by four matrix. If I multiply this by PB, okay, since this is 4 by 4, I cannot directly multiply it by PB, which is a 3 by 1. So that's why I put 1 at the bottom here. So this makes this vector a 4 by 1, and that makes it consistent. So I can, I can multiply this translate transformation matrix by this vector, okay? 4 by 4 multiplied by 4 by 1, uh, which is consistent. We can do this multiplication. And as a result here, I'm going to get P relative to A, but I'll also get 1 here at the bottom. So that would be a 4 by 1. And once I'm done with the multiplication, I just disregard, disregard this one and keep the first three elements of this vector, which defines P relative to A. Okay, so if I do this, then I can just use transformation matrix of B relative to A multiplied by P relative to B and 1 right here. Okay, and that would give me this uh, P relative to A and 1. Now, if we decompose this equation right here, we can go back to our original equation that we had right here. Okay, let's look at this. I need to multiply these two together and make sure that I can get this out of both of them. Okay, so RAB multiplied by PB. Okay, that's this term. And then plus... PB origin relative to A multiplied by 1. So that would be right here. Okay. And then we go to the last row here. 0, 0, 0 multiplied by PB is 0. And then 1 multiplied by 1 is 1. So that makes this one equals to 1. Okay. So it's useless for me. So all what I need now is this equation, which is the original equation that we found right here. All right. So I can adopt this uh, to be more a uh, simple way to find uh, this kind of mapping when we have both translation and rotation. Uh, just remember that you add 1 to this vector so that it becomes 4 by 1. And then once you are done with, with the multiplication, make sure that the results here, uh, you only take the first three elements and disregard the one at the bottom of this uh, vector. 
Now let's take an example uh, on the translation and rotation together. Frame B is rotated relative to frame A about Z axis by 30 degrees. Then translate it 10 units in XA and 5 units in YA. Define frame B relative to frame A, which means find TB relative to A. Then find P relative to A if P relative to B is 3, 7, and 0 transpose. Okay? Now let's uh, put here a graph and see how it looks like. So we have frame A here that has XA and YA. And as you can tell here, this looks like a planar problem because we have rotation about Z and we have translation in X and Y. Uh, and also the vector here is also in X and Y. So we don't expect anything to change in terms of uh, any position in Z uh, in this perspective. Okay, so we have XA and YA in black here. So that defines frame A. And of course, ZA will be coming out of the screen. And then frame B is in red here. That's XB and YB. And of course, ZB is coming out of the screen from this point. Okay. And then uh, when we look at this, the way I drew this, uh, I drew this based on what we are given here, the information. So the origin of frame B is relative to frame A, 10 units in XA, as we see here. Okay. And then 5 units in YA as given here. 5 units in YA. So that's why I put the origin here. And then the rotation was about Z axis by 30 degrees. So what I did is I put X, XB and YB 30 degrees from XA and YA. Remember, right hand rule, if I put my thumb in uh, X and ZA, and then I go uh, 30 degrees, then that makes XB and YB uh, 30 degrees from XA and YA. Okay, so that here results in frame B as shown in red. And then we have point P relative to frame B is defined as 3, 7, and 1. So let's look here. I'm going relative to frame B, 3 units in XB. Okay, so that's up here and then 7 units in YB and that makes point P right at this point okay so that's according to what's given right here so I drew point P in black all right and then I put that P relative to B I put it in green right here that vector P relative to B and I put the uh, P of B origin relative to A in green here and I put the rotation of frame B relative to A, 30 degrees right here. Okay. And now what I need to define is I need to define P relative to A. That's in blue right here. Okay. So as you can see, that point relative to XA, question mark right here. And that point relative to YA is question mark right here. And that's what I need to define to define to find P relative to A. Okay, so first of all, I need to find transformation matrix. So transformation of B relative to A consists of rotation of B relative to A, and then the position of B origin relative to A. Okay, so the three by three rotation is right here. Since, since the rotation is about the Z axis, that means this is one, and the remainder elements uh, in the same row and column would be zeros as you see and then we have cosine 30 degrees negative sine 30 degrees sine 30 degrees and cosine 30 degrees okay you can put them in terms of cosine and sine 30 degrees or you can evaluate them and put the answer right here okay and then p of b origin relative to a is also given right here 10 units in x that's right here and 5 units in y that's right here and there's nothing in Z, so we put zero right here. And again, the last row would be zero, 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 and one. Okay, so that defines my four by four transformation matrix. Now I'm ready to do the other por portion of the example. Find P relative to A if P relative to B is given as such. Okay, so I need to define P 
relative to frame A, which is basically this uh, projection into Y and projection into X. And we already, of course, know projection into Z would be zero because it's, it's inside that plane. OK, so as we saw earlier, uh, we have to put P relative to A and 1. And that would be equal to transformation matrix of B relative to A times P relative to B and 1. And the reason, again, we did this because transformation matrix is a 4 by 4. So I need to make sure that PB, which is a 3 by 1, is converted into a 4 by 1 so that the dimensions are consistent. OK, and as a result, I will have PA and a 1 here, which makes this 4 by 1 vector, which makes it also consistent. OK, so I substitute here. This is T, B relative to A, which I just found right here. And then P relative to B, I have 3, 7, and 0, which are right here, 3, 7, and 0. And then I have 1 at the bottom, as we mentioned here. If you do this multiplication, you're going to get this answer, 9.098, 12.562, and 0, and 1. Now be careful. This is not my final answer because this does not represent P relative to A. Okay. My final answer is only the first three elements, and I have to disregard this one. Okay. So P relative to A is the first three element, elements, which makes it, of course, a three by one as expected. Now let's take an n-class exercise here that I want you to do on your own. Frame B is rotated relative to frame A about x-axis by 45 degrees. Then translated negative 12 units in xA, 3 units in yA, and 10 units in zA. Define frame B relative to frame A, which means find T of B relative to A. Then find P relative to A if P relative to B equals to negative 2, 6, and negative 5 transpose. Okay, I want you to solve this on your own. And I'm going to pause for a few seconds. Please pause the video. And once you're done solving this exercise, you can resume to see the answer. OK, now I'm assuming that you have done the answer already and you're resuming the video. Let's look at the answer. So the first thing is the transformation matrix T of B relative to A. We need to find the rotation portion and the translation portion. So the rotation here is about uh, x axis by 45 degrees. Okay, so that means one here and then zeros in the same row and same column. And then cosine, negative sine, and sine, cosine of 45 degrees in this block. Okay, so that defines my 3 by 3 rotation matrix inside of my transformation matrix. Now for P of B origin relative to A, it's given here in words, translated negative 12, negative 12 in uh, XA, so that's negative 12 here, 3 units in YA, that's 3 here, and 10 units in ZA, that's 10 here, and then the bottom is always 0, 0, 0, and 1. Okay, so now I'm ready to construct my equation to find P relative to A. So P relative to A and 1 equals to T B A or B relative to A times P relative to B and 1. OK, this I already found from the previous step and then multiplied by P relative to B. That's defined right here. And then we put the one right here as we put it there. And then when we do this multiplication, we're going to find out that this multiplication results in this 4 by 1 vector, negative 14, and then this expression, this expression, and 1 at the bottom. Okay, now my final answer would be the first three elements from this vector. So that would give me the 3 by 1 vector of defining P relative to frame 